Welcome to Chester Zoo. Um, I'm Kim, uh, one of the carnivore keepers here at Chester. Uh, today we're going to have a little look at our sun bears. Um, so we've got three sun bears here at Chester Zoo. We've got um, mum and dad, so Millie and Tony, and we've got uh, Kyra, who I don't know whether you'll be able to see her, just at the back eating a watermelon. Um, they're, they've been at the zoo for quite a while now. Um, Millie is 2000, uh, was born in 2013. No, sorry, she is 13 years old. Um, and Tony is 15 years old. Uh, Kyra was born just um, a year and a half ago, so she was born on June 13th. Um, so she's still quite young, but she is um, big. You can see Millie's actually there climbing up um, one of our trees to get one of the watermelons uh, we've put up. Um, so this is a really natural behaviour for our sun bears. Um, they're really good climbers. Um, they are um, actually the smallest species of bear. Um, and they are the most arboreal um, species of bear as well, so they will um, choose to climb, although Millie seems to be coming down and <laughs> forgetting that one at the moment. Um, they've got lots of uh, treats and things hidden around their paddock today. Um, we've given them bamboo feeders, which they might have a, an explore of later. Um, you can see Millie's climbing and trying to smell out um, all of the food. They do forage a lot, so they are foraging bears, so we um, try and encourage this behaviour as well. Um, and we'll feed them about five, six times a day. Um, so they get plenty of food. This is uh, one of the last feeds of the day. They've probably got another one after this, um, and then they'll be done for the evening. Um, so currently it's just Millie and Kyra in this paddock. Um, we've got uh, Tony in a separate paddock at the moment, but um, because Kyra is still quite young, um, we have left mum to kind of raise uh, Kyra um, for, th for this kind of long period of time. She has um, weaned and everything now, but it's still nice to have um, mum's comfort um, there as well. Um, so Millie's going to show off for you now and climb, get her watermelon. So every Friday we give them a, water a watermelon each. Um, so that's for all of our bear species, including our Andean bears that we have here at Chester as well. Um, we call this on our team a fun fruit. So every day of the week, they get something different that's not part of their, not their normal diet. Um, so they might get oranges and uh, grapes and sweet corn, things like that, that we don't give them on a daily basis, but they do get um, as a treat. So watermelon is their fun fruit for today. You can see her trying to get it off the tree there. <laughs> <laughs> so they've got these really um, big strong claws as well that help um, them grip so as you can see Millie's um, showing that off very well just there she doesn't she's almost fire fire um, man pulling it down the um, tree she is very agile and now she can eat it all off the ground <laughs> And Kyra's still enjoying her watermelon above the den there. So some bears, they have um, a really long tongue as well. Um, it reaches about 25 centimetres long. Um, this is uh, mostly because they um, are omnivorous, so they will eat things like bugs um, as well as fruit and veg, um, which means in the wild they will um, go and uh, find like honey and things in crevices and in um, beehives, so it is really important that they have um, long tongues for this. Um, another name for them is actually the honey bear um, as well. Um, so. And the sun bears, they do get their name from that lovely chest marking, hopefully one of them will show it to you in just a moment. Um, but they have um, the kind of U-shaped um, chest markings, and um, they are all unique. Um, but they are supposed to represent the rising sun, um, so that is where they get their name from. And Millie and Tony, um, our mum and dad, they are very special bears to us. Um, they've, they're actually rescue bears, so they've come uh, from Cambodia. Um, they were part of the illegal pet trade, so um, their mums were poached um, and 
they um, were rescued um, from there and have uh, come to us, I think in 2007 it was they came um, to Chester. Um, so they're, they need a lot of love and attention really. Um, they can be quite nervous sometimes because obviously we don't know exactly what their conditions were um, before they were rescued, but they might have been um, in confined, confined spaces. Um, so we always have to be really careful when we um, care for our bears um, that we don't um, make them more nervous than they need to be. So Kyra is going to give you a lovely demonstration here now of um, how to get bugs out of a bamboo feeder. So I think she's got some mealworms in there today. Um, so as I was saying, they are omnivorous, so um, she will eat bugs as well. We give them mealworms, crickets and locusts. Um, so it's part of their daily, daily diet. So Kyra, um, the bear that you're looking at now, she um, was the first sun bear uh, cub born in the UK. So again, she is a very special bear. Um, she's, as I say, a year and a half now, um, so, but she'll probably uh, move on to another collection or something at some point um, to hopefully be a breeding bear herself. She's not quite at that age yet. She's not reached sexual maturity. So um, as I said, we're keeping her here with um, mum for now. And another threat to these bears as well is um, deforestation. Um, so they're from Southeast Asia, so countries like Cambodia and um, Vietnam, places like this. Um, and so basically, um, forest has been taken over by uh, palm oil plantations. Um, so a lot of things uh, in our shopping trolleys uh, include palm oil. So um, particularly uh, bath and shower products and um, things like peanut butter and uh, Nutella, things like that, um, have palm oil in them, um, which so long as it's sustainable, it is okay. Um, so basically what's happened is uh, people have um, deforested um, big areas um, and created these palm oil plantations, which are very uniform uh, plantations and not ideal for um, growing um, other natural vegetation. Um, and also it's not ideal for wildlife to actually live in. Um, so it has affected many different species, some bears obviously only being one of them. It's affected things like um, our tigers, which I think you're going to hear about a little bit later. Um, and also um, orangutans are a big species that are threatened by this. Um, so if you're ever looking in what you're buying in the supermarkets, if it has sustainable palm oil, that's the one to get. And that means that they're using already um, plantations that have been created for palm oil, they're reusing those plantations and um, so no extra forest is being um, um, cut down. Yeah, she's doing a good display here of uh, this bamboo feeder which is great. Lily's climbing at the back again. Another huge threat to these, um, this species is um, hunting. Um, you can see their lovely big paws there. Um, that is actually a delicacy in some of these Southeast Asian countries. So they have things like bear paw soup, 
and for me nothing like that will ever happen to our son guys they are perfectly safe here um, at Chester and um, so they have the best life that they can have while being here and um, they can also be hunted so that um, they get uh, bile from the gallbladders um, this is supposed to be um, used for medicinal purposes, however there's no scientific evidence that this is actually true. Um, so it's, uh, they are extremely uh, vulnerable um, where they live in the wild. She's moved on to the next mealworm bamboo. <laughs> She's going to hog all the mealworms. So we're going to move over to our male sun bear as well. And um, as you can see, we've got all of this lovely public space that you probably are aware of. And um, we've got a nice indoor area for them as well. Lots of climbing facilities there as well. Um, and then here's Tony's paddock. So he's out showing his best bamboo feeder skills as well. Um, so he's got a, an interesting bamboo feeder. It's split into three different compartments. Um, so he can't get all the bugs out of one hole. He has to get it out of three separate holes. Um, so it'll take him quite a while, I imagine. It's also a lot heavier. Um, but Tony can manage it, he's a strong bear, he's got these massive upper body muscle um, like the girls have as well, which is uh, particularly good for um, their climbing. Um, and as you can see, their, his paddock looks a little bit different as well, he does have a pool in it, which is um, quite nice, especially for uh, days like this, where the weather is getting a bit warmer, sometimes put floating fruit in, um, so that he has to fish them out, Bob, Bob the apple. Um, so it provides lots of nice enrichment opportunities for us to um, give them different things to do. And what a lovely day it is. <laughs> So because we've got the indoor paddock as well, um, it means that we can uh, split their timeshare of it. Um, so Tony will get it every second day, the girls will get it every second day. Um, it just means it's a little bit more variety for them. Um, obviously on s such a nice day like today, they probably will spend most of their time outside anyway, but it does give them more options and gives us more options as keepers as well um, to do some more exciting things for them. Um, so I think we're going to um, move you on to the tigers. I think that's supposed to be at three, uh, half two, half two. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully see you there or someone else will. <laughs> Keep safe.